folks, let's talk about fire. What is it and how does it work? I'm going to help you understand today. Now, fire starts with some wood from the branches of a tree. Wood is good as a fuel because it has a lot of carbon and carbon likes to stick with oxygen molecules. If you can hit that oxygen molecule fast enough so that the carbon and oxygen combine to create carbon dioxide, which is what you see in the flames. All right, folks, here's what we've got. The Barry Science Lab logo. Let's burn this thing up. Fire is all about combustion. So we start with methane, CH4, and to that we add on oxygen, 2O2. Oxygen naturally exists in the form of dioxygen. And that gives us what? It gives us CO2, carbon dioxide, right? But we have one additional product for this reaction, and that's water. Water, you can see, forms in the base of our, of our candle. Now let's clean up this mess. Let's zoom in. So you're thinking, is fire a solid, a liquid, a gas, or even a plasma? Some people think that fire is a plasma, but that's not the case. Because plasma, electrons are stripped off of where they're supposed to be. But fire, that's not the case. A lot of people think that fire is a gas. And actually, fire does have some of the properties of a gas, right? It's, it's so hot that all the atoms have a lot of jiggly motion, a lot of kinetic energy. But the problem is that gases are supposed to exist in the same state indefinitely, forever. But fire is not that kind of, uh, of, of matter, right? Fire always has to burn out eventually. So it does not fit the textbook definition of a gas. If water and carbon dioxide are the only products of a combustion reaction, then why is there smoke coming out of my fire? That's not one of the products, that doesn't make sense. But listen up folks, that smoke is the result of incomplete combustion. If you have some of the fuel, some of the wood, some of the paper that is not burned, is not combusted, that means there's not enough oxygen to burn it, okay? There's not enough oxygen to meet up with enough carbons to create carbon dioxide, to create your fire. And the result of those unburned particles is what you see as smoke. So for something to be combustible, to be flammable, it needs to have a lot of carbon. Carbon that can be easily oxidized by the oxygen in the air, you know, dioxide, O2. So what kind of things have that kind of carbon? Well, for one, paper has that kind of carbon. That's why paper can burn easily. In other words, you can also have wood, right? Wood also has a lot of carbons because trees and tree branches have carbons uh, because of the process of photosynthesis and all of that. You can also have have candles. Candles have a lot of hydrocarbons, which are carbon surrounded by hydrogen atoms on the outside. All of these materials have a lot of carbon atoms, which are oxidizable by air oxygen. Now, materials like minerals, rock, glass, and water do not have this kind of carbon or carbon at all. And so they're not easily combustible or flammable at all. Now you might be thinking, why do fires look the way they do? Why are some fires orange, some fires red, and some fires are even blue? The answer to that question starts with electrons. Fires heat up atoms so much, so much jiggly motion, so much kinetic energy, that the actual electrons in these atoms jump up some energy levels. And so when these electrons jump back down, they release photons, electromagnetic waves, and these are lights. These are lights that we perceive as visible light, and these visible light can be orange, they can be red, they can be blue. The more blue or white a flame is, the hotter it is. The more red or orange it is, the cooler it is. This is the nature of fire and combustion. Oh. I think it's time for some emergency action. You need three things for a fire. You need fuel, which comes from the wood. That's your fuel, and wood comes from the branches of a tree. You need some heat, that can come from a candle flame. And finally, you need some oxygen. Oxygen is in the air around us. So here's all these oxygen molecules floating around. Now you might think, okay, so if I need oxygen, why isn't the wood burning already? Because of a reason. The reason is the oxygen and the carbon in the wood, the wood has carbon molecules everywhere. The oxygen and the carbon are friends, like they'll, they'll stick together. But the oxygen doesn't know that it's friends with the carbon. So it's almost like uh, the oxygen is rolling down a hill, right? 
it, it goes all the way to the top of the hill it doesn't know there's a little putty hole here that it can combine with the carbon in so it just rolls back down but if you give the oxygen enough speed so that it goes over the top and into the putty hole so that it clicks with the carbon then you've got some carbon dioxide and now you're gonna start to see some flames okay so when the oxygen and carbon stick together they start moving around they start jiggling around and so there's a lot of kinetic energy a lot of jiggly motion and those oxygen molecules and carbon dioxide molecules they bump into other atoms and other molecules and they start jiggling around and so you've got a whole bunch of jiggly motion and that's fire okay so now you might think hey why does fire have such a weird shape right why does it why is it fat on the bottom but skinny at the top well it's because near the bottom of the fire you've got some cooler air you've got some cool air but near the top you have warmer air okay so this is warm air and so as cool air becomes hotter this is called convection currents the cool air becomes hotter and it rises to the top right because warm air is less dense than cool air and less dense air rises to the top and so that's why you have this kind of uh, nature of fire being skinny on the top and fat on the bottom in space actually fire is just like a spherical ball uh, you've got no gravity nothing and so now let's talk about one more thing about fire which is what is the actual chemical equation for fire the chemical equation for fire is as follows fire is just a combustion reaction and here's the formula for that methane plus some oxygen carbon dioxide and water that's why if you're burning a candle you're gonna see water forming around in the in the little base of the wax okay so that's how fire works folks thanks for watching this episode we'll check you out next time